One silent night, the unyielding woods swallow three unfortunate souls just out of sight of their shared home. Thrown together, drifting apart, is their company a blessing or a curse? Through perils both ancient and very near, these three must find their way or be lost to the forest forever. Hi folks, welcome to Follow the Leader, a podcast focused on telling character-driven stories through the use of GMless tabletop games where we can all take the lead. You can find us on Twitter at FTLcast and at FTLcast.com. And we have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash FTLcast. You can also find us on Tumblr at FTLcast. I know August's making an effort to update over there more often. Today we're playing Los Abales by Mercedes Acosta. Apologies for my butchering of Spanish. I had never taken Spanish as, a, as an option at school. So. But for those of you who are new to the, this game... Here are the basics. Behind your house, there's a forest. The trees are impossibly dark, and where the wind howls through the woods every night you hear singing, you see lights. They want you to dance with them. They want you to join them. Listen for them. Scream with them. You have a secret, and the woods want you to remember. One day, the call becomes irresistible. You are consumed with need. You step out the back door, you unlatch the low fence, and you walk among the trees. I'm Jade, and you can find me most places on the internet at Jadox or Droz, and my pronouns are they, them. Playing with me today, we have Corey. Hi, folks. My name is Corey. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me at Twitter on Endless Musings, and you can find me at co-host at Musinem. And we have Sam. Hi, uh, I'm Sam. I use he/him pronouns and he/they pronouns. All of the pronouns, but only those ones. Uh, you can find me on Tumblr at Sassy Tail, and uh, you can find the half-remembered husk of my old Twitter account at SAKLO if you so wish. I don't post there anymore. Our lines, which are things we absolutely do not want to see are homophobia and transphobia, racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, violence against children and animals, sexual assault, domestic violence or intimate partner violence, unwanted pregnancy, and plagues and pandemics. Our veils, things we're fine addressing, but we'll just fade to black on our steamy situations, graphic descriptions of bodily harm and terminal illness. Content warning for this game, it is a horror game, we don't know what we're going to necessarily run into yet. If needed, we'll record something at the end, just so we can put a heads up. But if you're not in the right headspace uh, for horror, for people being uh, in danger, maybe give this one a miss until you're in a better headspace for it. But with all that out of the way, let's get started. That's spooky. Los Abales is a horror adventuring game about being lost in the woods at night for two to four people. It runs on a diceless, mathless, GMless system and requires only a deck of standard playing cards and a few hours to play. We've uh, got minimal character creation. Uh, we've done a little bit. Um, but first of all, uh, we have our characters. We'll learn a little bit about them and then we will choose 
a secret, an item, and we'll define some things about our dwelling, the woods, the call, and the trees. So we will uh, dive in. I want to give a shout out. We're not going to have time to read it all out, but there is some really extensive safety notes uh, in this text. And also um, the writer Mercedes has done a really good job um, stressing the importance of not crossing cultural boundaries um, with so many um, mythologies and religions and folklores drawing on like themes of being in the woods because obviously it's such a common experience it could be very easy to go oh well I'll just borrow that and uh, Mercedes has really stressed the importance of not borrowing from closed religions and sacred sites for inspiration which is cool to see uh, we love responsible game design in this house um, we've decided um, off mic uh, that our characters well, they could live together as well, to be honest. This could be like student housing or something, whatever mm -hmm. we want. Um, the game is designed for us to encounter the woods as separate entities or to have like a story interwoven as the number of encounters that you have. But um, we can all be have different dwellings that, book on, that back onto the same woods. Or we can know each other prior to meeting in said woods. I suppose it's a matter of what we find more interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, let's introduce our characters. The thing, um, so name, pronouns, appearance, and what the book asks uh, to do is your character's spirituality. So I know my name is first, but I'm the leader, so I get to make Corey go first and tell us about his character. <laughs> uh the true horror going first <laughs> uh yes i have warden w lockwood uh he has he him pronouns um the appearance i have set out for him is hazelnut eyes cropped brown hair plain half moon glasses fixed around the neck with a chain rough sandy colored skin a slightly crooked nose five o'clock shadow a baggy green cardigan a mostly buttoned white shirt Durable brown denim jeans and well-worn sneakers with the sole starting to wear thin. Um, for his sense of spirituality, it's a sort of half-remembered Christianity, kind of more by rote than by anything else, and an admiration for the stars in the dark of the night. Uh, Sam, if you want to introduce us to your person. I will. Um, I am playing Leif Vanderboss. I'll use he, they pronouns for him. Um, Leaf's appearance is a long corduroy skirt buttoned down the front, a baggy sweatshirt, forearm crutches, and a short straight bob. Large, ra large round glasses and a beanie with dark brown eyes deeply set. For spirituality, um, he's Jewish but out of practice. And... I'll be playing uh, Misha Elenik, uh, who uses they, them pronouns, a character I've only played on Patreon before. So this is their main feed debut. Appearance, uh, tall and thin, with pale freckled skin, green eyes, and dark auburn hair cut into a messy uh, chin length, sort of bob slash wolf cut kind of a vibe. Um, a scar that's only just starting to pale runs down their face, framed by the deep shadows under their eyes and at odds with their easy smile. Dresses for comfort, leggings, baggy sweatshirts with the necks cut out over tank tops, fuzzy socks and practical walking boots. And in terms of their spirituality, they're a believer, but not a person of faith. So do we want these folks to already know each other or do we want them to meet in the woods? What's more interesting? Because this could literally be any group of um, these people. These people could be most ages, quite frankly. So yeah, it's true. It is very true. Oh, I do like it when people meet in the woods when they're strange to each other and don't understand who they're looking at. I'm down. What do you think, Sam? Have you got a preference? The woods. <laughs> 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 I 
Sorry, Mr. Sondheim. Sure, I'll do a better job than James Corden. Yeah, I fucking said it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, you down for these folks to not know each other, Samwise? Yeah, I like that idea. All right. Sorry, I thought I, I thought I had agreed to that before I started going off in my little tangent. <laughs> <laughs> you may have done it. I may have just missed it. It's all good. That's so fair. I don't think I did, actually. <laughs> all right, then. Okay, well, so... Now we need to choose some things about us. Um, mm -hmm. Let's leave the two fun things. I say the fun things. So there are two things about us as people, and then there are things about the surroundings or setting. Let's talk about um, our dwellings, the secure place we call home. I don't know why I put that weird pause in there, but I did. We call home. E.T. call home. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little ill, so I'm I'm a little loopy. That's fine. We'll lean in. I'm just going to lean into it. It's yeah. the woods. It's, it's look, the woods. We're about to have some... This is... Our spoopy game of the year. We're recording this on the 15th of October. Even if, mm. um, because, you know, our editor in chief, podcast dad, August, is getting married at the end of this month, uh, specifically a weekend, the weekend Ooh. after we record this. Ooh. We're all very excited. Um, we but love hopefully you, this August. will, we do. Uh, but not sure when this will come out. Um, but hey, Halloween's a state of mind. Uh, spooky season can last up till Thanksgiving if you want it. So, and it does. Damn Keep true. it in your heart it. all the year. It's true. We as gay people keep Halloween in our heart mm -hmm. always. So, let's talk about our secure abodes. So you said student housing early on. Well, we we could be. I was going to go a step further and say, like, a hostel, even. Ooh, okay. I like that. Well, because we're not living at the same place yeah. anymore. But that doesn't yeah. mean that, you know, I think all of us on the call have done, have done our time in higher education. Student housing <laughs> can really run a gamut. Um, oh, yeah. Student I can. housing's pretty big, also. Like, it's very possible for our characters to be in student housing together and not know each other. Oh, yeah. That's true. I'm kind of really vibing with the idea of, like, maybe we're not actually that far from the university. Like, we can get to the woods in a moment. But especially if this is somewhere like, I don't know, New England or so somewhere where there's a lot of old woods. I don't know that New England is where there's going to be a lot of old woods. I think the Midwest I, I don't know why New England was the one I thought of, like Massachusetts, maybe. Either way, old words. Massachusetts is in New England. I love you. <laughs> Fuck off. I do not know your stupid ass big country. No, but like, I like the idea that we're like, we're at like fucking UMass Amherst. I think that's funny. Because okay, I was just thinking like a lot of the um, sort of gothic horror that I think of always seems to be around that part of the woods, uh, that part of the world. And That's it's so all woods. Funny. It is. It is yeah. all woods. There's a lot of woods in Massachusetts. You're not wrong. I don't okay. know that I would consider it old growth, but it is out there. Well, you know what? In there. in Western Mass, there's definitely some old growth for us. Cool. So I so to round back to the point, <laughs> the idea that maybe the the university or the college campus is near this old growth or these like or even not if not old mm. but big. And so yeah. they can't build in the woods because it's, like, protected or whatever. So, like, there's pockets of, like, student housing just around as close to the university as they can make it without mm -hmm. interfering with this protected woodlands. I like that. Yeah. Fantasy right. UMass Amherst. Yeah. Mm. UMass Redacted. Could be any mass <laughs> campuses. <laughs> it's fine. It can be like what is it? Um, oh, my brain has completely done a blank on the one in Cthulhu. 
Oh, like in Arkham, or not, no, it's, um... It's not Arkham. Now I'm losing it. Damn. Right? I've literally played Call of Cthulhu. Miskatonic. Thank, thank you. That sort of vibe. God, that shouldn't have been so hard. Thank you, Corey. Fuck. Um, I had to summon it from the depths. Yeah. But, like, fictional, like, yeah, exactly the vibe. So. Yeah. Let, let's throw some... I suppose let's say how does your how does our how do our characters specifically feel about this dwelling? Hate it. Mm-hmm. Why? What about it do you hate? It's too tall, too big. They miss living in a house. It's oversized? It's oversized, it's too sterile. It feels mm-hmm. too much like, you know. Yes, it's 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 like a transient housing experience for like, you know, you live there for a year and then you leave again and then you live in a different dorm for a year and then you leave again Too like too many people have been and gone. Is it institutional? Like big and like impersonal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that effect. Like, people try to put things on the doors to make it their own, but, you know, with the end of the year and the season, that all seems to slide away and it all becomes impersonal again. All right. What about Warden? How does he feel? Uh, I think he actually is quite a fan of it, but I think he also doesn't quite live within the hall so much. I think the joke is that he tends to live on the roof and Mm -hmm. that his dorm is just the place that he comes down to sleep. Mm-hmm. So for him, the height and the presence is actually a good thing. Um, the only thing that he wishes is that it was a lot darker. So uh, would sturdy feel like the right way to describe it for him? Like it's like a bedrock? Yes, I think so. All right. For Misha. I don't think they necessarily know how they feel about this space in a in a similar way to leave like that impersonal nature of the building makes it hard for them to really have a much of an impression of it at all because it doesn't ask anything so I don't want to use the word sterile. <laughs> that is, I want to let you know the word that I was that came to mind too for me. So, I feel like dorms are always a little too grimy to be necessarily described as sterile. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, but how about liminal? Maybe liminal sounds good. Is it liminal or is it the opposite of liminal? Well, it's a place that people are always passing through, so it's not somewhere where you really feel like you belong, right? Yeah, no, I I remember specifically reading a thing about the opposite of a liminal space, um, uh, um, and there's a uh, a full word for it, and it was really cool because yeah, a liminal space is where people once were. It's like you say, it's a transient sort of space, um. Damn it, I read a really cool thing just talking about it. And like places that feel too real, that feel too fixed. Um, no, me yeah, neither. I can't even I think I may it was possibly it was a it was probably a Tumblr post and somebody was just like theorizing a word to talk about it. Cause Googling is not helping. But Google is broken anyway. Search Tumblr po- Put the word Tumblr post at the end of your Google search. It might come up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tumblr, a place where nobody's ever big on liminal spaces. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> this is so my brain just to get completely lost in what exactly a liminal space is. Welcome to Follow the Leader, a podcast where <laughs> we love cl- liminal spaces. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to quickly see if I can find this post, and if I can't, I'll come up with a different word. Yeah, this random thing that I'm seeing, like, there is a random Reddit thread that has come up when I searched for, quote-unquote, the opposite of liminal space. Yeah, I saw that too. They called it manifest, and I'm like, I'm not quite sure, but I kind of get what they're going for, at least. 
No, I think there was it, like manifest spaces. Manifest that, spaces. That are just like unavoidable, solid. I like that, but I don't think that quite fit. But I want something that feels like the very opposite of dreamlike. It's just this sort of like fixed, unyielding. Like the hyper real. Yeah. I'm going to go with unyielding. Okay. Yeah. Because I want something that feels different in tone to sturdy. Because it's more about. Man, no, maybe I don't want unyielding. Fuck. Well, I get it though, right? Because sturdy is that it stands well against the environment. And when I hear the word unyielding, it, it's. It's like it's self-establishing. It it, it it becomes its own, right? Mm. It is ironically an institution. <laughs> mm. Good to know we're all on the same page about it, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do we the book has ramshackle, tidy, old, warm, empty, sturdy, and remote, all as uh, suggestions. Like the other thing that I'm thinking of is like a tautology, you know? Sure. Something that is in and of itself just true. Mm. And real. I'm going to put constant. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Because I like the, the myriad of ways that sort of plays in, but just like constant in the reliable sense, but also in the inescapable sense, in all the senses. In the sense of memory and the sense of space and place. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's talk about these woods. How about these fucking woods? Yeah. What are these woods like? Uh, to read the prompts from the book, the woods are, or your woods are, ancient, silent, dense, tired, vast, lively, hungry. All are watching. I like hungry. Hungry is always a fun one. Hell yeah. We love to get eaten by the trees. I'm less inclined to put names to attach to these ones, I've got to say. So. I like vast also. Yeah, that's plenty of air. Mm hmm. I think silent is a fun one as well. Is that the vibe you want to go with for the. for. I don't know here. Like, is that. Like, does nothing live here? Yeah, it's. Just too quiet. All right. It's like, um, so there is something that I will use to describe what's in my brain. Um, have any of you heard of an, I think it's called an, 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 an echoic chamber? Yeah, the one where they test like microphones and stuff. It basically has no echo. Yes, exactly. Like, um, I've heard before, and this is the kind of feeling that I'm having right now, that when you stand in these spaces, it is so quiet and there is so so much of a lack of uh, echo and reverb that you can start to hear your own heartbeat. And your blood moving around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. People can't go for too long in them because you become too aware of the sounds your body makes. And it just freaks you out. Right? Yep. Cool. Now we answer the what is the call? What is summoning us to these woods? Because something does. The prompts suggested are whistles, lights, tugging, screams, singing, figures moving, or murmurs. All are enticing. I would say lights on my end, sort of not a not a steady one, but sort of a twinkling. I like the idea of murmurs also. Well, this, I like the notion that it's something different calling to each of us, for sure. Mm. Makes sense to me. So for Warden, it's lights. For Leaf, it is, what was it you said? Murmurs. Murmurs. I think for Misha, it's, it's somewhere between tugging and figures moving. I'll get into to what that is to do with, but I'm going to lead off with that tugging, that being propelled to move. And then the trees. 
demanding our being. The trees are what want us in the woods. The suggestions in the book are upset, desirous, frightening, or inspiring, malignant, curious, and indifferent. All are dangerous. Mm. Mm. I quite like indifferent in this case, since it can mean more than just uncaring. It may mean that they also present walls, right? Mm -hmm. Does it mean that? Can be. Can be. They're not friendly, in other words, right? Yeah. And also they're just like so above us and beyond us that they're indifferent to our existence. Yep. And when you think about how old a tree can be as well, even before you get into anything other, capital O, other, trees are mm. old. <laughs> These trees, trees are, are old. old. Oh yeah. Old as ball. <laughs> I, there is something about indifference. Like, they want the trees are ask, demanding us be there, but they're also indifferent to us. I think that dichotomy is interesting. Yep. Mm. Or maybe what they're, they're like not indifferent to us existing. They maybe want us here, but they're indifferent about our well being. Yeah. <laughs> they're indifferent to our passage, our limitations as life forms to them we are but as ants mm. all right then let's return to the two last things about ourselves a something an item something you carry to protect you and a secret a shame only you and the woods know and the secrets um the prompts are here to give suggestions. I think you can just use them and you can be vague. You don't have to get like super specific. Um, and the, the book encourages us to lean in with these secrets can include um, a darker things just to uh, be aware of um, our lines as a, a podcast and also if anything else comes up that people want to like nix. The horror is fun. So that it is. Ooh, I think I'll go for something you do in silence for a secret for Warden. Oh, and these woods are so quiet. Mm. Precisely. I'm gonna go for a promise you broke. I'm gonna go with the person I ruined. Your item. Something you carry to protect you. Um and the book suggests, like, a beaded accessory, for example, which is one of these, could be a rosary, it could be prayer beads, it could be jewellery you made yourself. So. Uh, maybe in which case, maybe we should explain a little about what our secrets are. Yeah. Thinking of particulars. Because the sort of hooks in with what I'm attempting to figure out what this item should be. I'm between two different ones. Uh -huh. um, and you one of them would be have a... something else. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say you don't feel like you're bound to the ones that are suggested. Oh, absolutely not. I was between an astrolabe and a signal mirror. Mm. Mm. So I'm trying to figure out what exactly this thing that Warden does in silence is, and what sort of passion he feels for what is there in the stars. How big is an astrolabe? Um. Let me go find the size of an astrolabe. I'm just thinking, it's something you've got... That's why I was thinking it might be a single mirror. Yeah. Uh, how big are you? Yeah, it's... Mm, yeah. Yeah, I'll go for a single mirror, I think. <laughs> they can be on the smaller end. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm seeing something that looks like the size of, like, Flava Flav's clock. And that mm -hmm. may not be <laughs> a pocket thing, necessarily. Not something e easy to necessarily carry around, yeah. Okay, we'll say a signal mirror then. I think I know how that ties into something that he doesn't silence to. I don't think the two have to be connected, for what it's worth. Oh, definitely not. I just like that they. I can do ah, that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. As long as you aren't feeling bound. No, no, I'm, right. I'm doing this as a conscious choice. Okay, leave. 
Mm-hmm. Why are you feeling item wise? I am feeling a comforting cloth, a scrap of velvet. Nice. For Misha, it is a special liquid. It's I'm trying to think. It's the sort of the bottle that it's in, the little container it's in, is about the size of like those airplane liquor bottles, like the, that sort of size. Oh, a nip. A nip. Is that what they're called? Uh, only in Boston. Ah. Uh, <laughs> fair. Um. <laughs> But in it is just this. No, that's gonna. Oh, no, I'm gonna do that. When I say this, please know I am not thinking about Full Metal Alchemist. When I say it, it's like this viscous <laughs> black fluid, it's thicker than ink. Mm. It, but it moves more like um, when you have like oil droplets in water. It, it's that kind of mm. kind of thing. A nip of. Greg Nort. <laughs> okay. I do love it when someone breaks out the word viscous and always tells you that something's a little wrong. Yeah. Alright. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on these secrets? Not necessarily fully. Yeah, I think I can give it a shot. I'm just quickly rolling ahead, just to have a note, because I feel like it possibly comes up later. So... Yeah, one of the oh. encounters will involve uh, your secret. So. <laughs> Sam, what have you posted? Not the Grognord. Um, <laughs> I think what uh, Warden does in silence has to do with why he's on the roof so often. And most especially late at night. Fair enough. Whatever it is that he is trying to reach out to or get confirmation from is why he spends so much time up there. Fair. I think that for Leaf, um, a promise that they broke was to protect somebody. Details of which shall be determined and revealed later. All right. And for me, should the person they've ruined um misha until well they aren't telling when but you can tell watching them move around that this is somebody that did ballet for a long time like that posture never really leaves yeah the way they carry themselves the way that they move there's just something about that life that never leaves you even if you leave the life and ballet is notoriously competitive as well as incredibly mm. difficult let's leave it at that for now nodding my head nodding my head yes so we have built our characters we've determined our dwelling, the woods, the call, and the trees. And so we're going to begin our journey, and we will have seven encounters in these woods before we make it out or are lost forever. So we've got a deck of cards ready to go uh, in our roll 20. So um, we'll do this first encounter, and then depending on how long we find it takes, um, as we each do it, we'll determine sort of if we do the following encounters more collectively or again. Each of us, I think, will draw a card for all of them because that's fun. So, the first encounter. The woods have swallowed you. The only sources of light are the waning moon and your guttering candle, your flickering torchlight. You look back and your house seems so far away single lit candle in the window feels like a wistful goodbye, as if it knows you likely won't be back. Your home is far away, and that light is all that's left moving in it. As you watch, the light goes out, and you hear a rustling in the leaves. Draw a card, react accordingly, evaluate your actions.
All right. Mm-hmm. Corey. Uh, to be clear, the book, um, the numbers aren't going to matter. Uh, do keep track of our cards, what cards get drawn in the dock, because that will make a difference later, I believe. Um, but it's about the suit rather than the number. Gotcha. I assume that's the case, looking at the uh, the guide. Uh, the suit, um, much like other games you might have heard us play on Follow the Leader, each suit uh, has a different flavour to it. So yeah. Let's see what we got, gang, for this first encounter. I think I can start out then. Go for it, please. Take us away, Corey. I've got a nine of spades. Uh, yeah. Which, by here, <clears throat> you do something foolish. Fear or upset drives you. You act without thinking and dig deeper into the grime. Who have you hurt? It's, this can include yourself, other players, or the trees. And the hurt need not be physical. Um, I think for Warden, uh, while he hasn't gone into the woods all that often, he has been around the edges of it before, when the building itself has been too bright. So... Um, in this sense, he actually strides sort of confidently forward, a little too confidently. Um, when he starts hearing the rustling, the noises, he's not sure if it's just beneath his feet or if there's something that's further out. So he starts to quicken uh, as he walks through. And I think as he moves with that sort of haste to try and get away from the noises that he heard, which may not be himself, or uh, which may be himself or not himself, and he's not sure, he ends up, let's say, injuring his sense of direction, snagged up in the branches and trees, and now just utterly lost as to which way he's headed. So I think he has lost a lot of his confidence in where he was going. Can I go next? Please. All right. I have drawn the Six of Hearts, and uh, Hearts is, you allow vulnerability to take over. Anxiety, guilt, anger, you wear your heart on your sleeve for a moment. What does this reveal about you to the other? So I think that Leaf is, in the beginning, moving somewhat confidently into the woods. As trees around them become more silent, and they see the light go out they let their guilt and their fear take over and they run quite loudly deeper into the woods revealing their location you hear somebody suddenly crashing through the tree disturbing the silence yeah yeah. So I drew spades for Misha as well. And it was this tugging feeling that sort of drew them out of their room, through the back door, out of the little garden area at the back of the housing, and into the woods. And they move deliberately, not hurriedly, but they're the sort of person that moves with purpose at all times. They're either like they're wasting movement, as it were, which would make the fact that their head's not quite on a swivel, but there's an uncertainty to them. And they are looking for it, like, I'm here, what is this, what do you want from me? And I think it's that frustration, they throw their hands up, like, fucking bullshit. I don't say anything, but as they uh, throw their arms up in, in frustration... The sleeve of their sweatshirt is caught on maybe hawthorn or something fawny, and it catches. And 
they have to yank uh, their arm back and the tearing of the fabric like, as they pull away was like this tearing sound echoes outwards and a small amount of blood is beating up uh, across their arm as they sort of debate whether to pull the bit of torn fabric off of the thorns that it's gotten snagged on or just like leave it and after a moment or two they just like fuck it and go to step further into the woods and uh, perhaps that's when they cross paths with Leaf. Say when they cross paths with Leaf, Leaf is looking a little worse for wear. Leaves in their hair and like a couple of little like scratches on them from where they just like barreled through the trees, like the branches like whipping at their face and stuff too. Hair all the fly away. I think with uh with Warden how with how lost he is, um sort of wanders by, uh, not directly through the midst of the duo, but then um, not that long after, you can see him sort of circling back, just looking from side to side, and definitely not, you know, <laughs> he's not traveling in, he's not traveling in a direction. If someone could be described as traveling in a lack of direction, uh -huh. and, like he's, he's just quite literally pacing around the same patch of woods. Mmm. Neat. Is that our first encounter? Sort of? I think it is. Yeah, I think it will be. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna just deal. Mm. That was not okay. what I thought was gonna happen, but never mind. <laughs> you have... Oh, so many cards. Yeah, I'm gonna recall... <sighs> oh, well, that's annoying. Okay, well, you'll just know whichever one the next one is, because I... I'm i going to blame Roll20 for that. That's fair. But yeah, you, you know which one comes after the one you already had, so... I'll go in order. No, just... Yeah, it's all good. Okay. So... The second encounter. You can feel it all around. They say seeing is believing, though you see nothing but trees. You only feel that cold brush across your neck, the ringing of your ears, the hair on your arms raising an alarm. They know you're here. They're testing your mettle, seeing if you're worth their time. The trees are awake. A branch snags your arm hard enough to stop you in your tracks. Draw a card, react accordingly, evaluate your actions. I think we might as well keep, like, each of us having our own thing, as it were. Um, mm. If we find that we're running low on time later, we'll move to one person leading the encounter. Sounds good. Okay, then I have diamonds. Mm. You allow yourself to be fooled. You can't trust your senses. You're deceived by the sparkle. What do you lose as a result? I think because he's kind of stopped looking ahead and has started looking more at his own feet and around, um, that's when something catches his arm. And that sudden jerk, more violent of emotion than his body was expecting, um, he ends up leaning forward and sort of out of the beam of the flashlight that he's brought along with him. Um, it flits by for a second, but just right over his head, he loses his glasses. Jinky. And so what exactly he had left for being able to parse the, the near details around him uh, is now just completely lost to him. And now he's feeling around the trees as he walks. He can see the blurs. He can see now more distant lights dancing around. 
but he's not sure which one to follow. What about Leaf? Leaf. Interestingly enough, I've also pulled Diamond. Um, Spoiler. Uh, so did I. Oh, fun. All of us are having a totally cool and normal one right now. Um, yeah. So, here's what happens for Leaf. The murmuring that stands out against the silence draws them... I like the I like how they like just ran into Misha and they're like, oh, weird. Another person in the woods. Oh, something's happening. And Leaf is just like. Um, in an attempt to hear more clearly what the murmuring is trying to tell them, it doesn't sound like words yet, but they feel like they can pick up just the hint of a word, the hint of a sound. And they're like, do you hear that? It's got to be coming from over there. And without looking, they wander off in search of this, this sound, this murmuring. And what they lose is the companionship that they just gained. Mm-hmm in Misha. Nice. For Misha, as Leaf sort of like doesn't wait for an answer and fucks off, um, <laughs> I think Misha just has thought of oh, well, fuck you then, I guess. Not maliciously. <laughs> they don't know Leaf well enough to care what they do and instead it's they debate they do debate whether to to follow them because they don't hear anything but that branch as they step away or maybe <laughs> if they go to but something it seems as if something leave dessert leave disturbed as they moved away, this branch re uh, sort of smacks back and cracks against Misha's arm, the one that's mm. already been ripped. And they don't swear out loud or whatever, um, but they assume it was Leaf's fault. They don't think it was the trees that did it, and it sort of confirms for them. Okay, don't do this with anybody else. Mm. and clearly um, takes off in um, a different direction. Um, if you like this, Corey, like, again, I've, in a similar way to leave, lost the opportunity to have somebody to share this moment with. Um, losing backup, uh, losing any sort of trust I might have been able to gain. Mm. Um, but yeah, Cora, if you like, yeah, I think as I'm moving in a different direction, um, I feel a slight crunch underfoot, mm. and um, the the <laughs> lenses aren't cracked fully because the ground is soft. But there's definitely like maybe one lens is slightly has now got like a ribbon crack going through it. Maybe one of the um, arms of the glasses is, has like pot like Yeah, it's like bent up. Yeah. Bent yeah. up out of shape. Um but I pick them up and I'll pocket them. Yeah. I think that's that that's a good one. I like that. The third encounter. The darkness is pressing in on you, filling your nose and throat. It's much like suffocating. But fear is only in our minds, you remind yourself. Your resolve is strengthened. The trees are nothing. You reach for your item, ready to comfort yourself with its presence. And it's gone. Something has taken it from you. Draw a card, react accordingly, evaluate your actions. 
Should we draw new cards or should we use the cards that were accidentally dealt to us? And you could use the ones that were accidentally dealt. Yeah. I think with that case, I've actually got hearts. Mm-hmm. And I as well. So you allow vulnerability to take over. Anxiety, guilt, anger. You wear your heart on your sleeve for a moment. What does this reveal about you to the others? Oh, so I think Warden, in trying to figure out what it is that he's trying to follow among the trees that he's seeing blurrily and sort of the splotches between shadows and trees, which he can't quite make the difference between, um, he reaches to pull his mirror out to try and cast some more light. Um, just to spread it out further among the trees. Um, and as he pats around his pocket, he realizes, oh, whatever caught him, whatever snagged him of the roots of the branches, what have you, um, he lost more than just his sight. So now, as he sort of dances around trying to figure out if maybe it might be in the area some by, flashing the light out for a glimmer and realizing that it's lost among the other will-o'-the-wisps or otherwise that he's seeing amongst the woods. Um, I think he just starts to... He raises a hand up as he's just kind of patting around with his other hand holding the light, uh, biting his nails down almost to the bone, um, a habit that he's had quite often, as he flashes around trying to find what it is that he lost or what might have taken it. I think that flashing around too, that could serve as a beacon for maybe one of the others to find him. Mm. Do you want to go next, Jade, or...? Um, please feel free. Alright. I think that Leaf is at a point there. I also got hearts, by the way. Um, so, Leaf is stumbling around on their on their crutches, and they stop for a moment, like very very fearful. And they reach into their pocket for their scrap of velvet that, at this point, is worn through in some spots from where they've rubbed it raw and rubbed it rubbed the fabric away, but. Of course, the velvet isn't there, and the murmuring is getting more overwhelming for how on the edge of their hearing it is. And so they call out, what do you want? Why are you doing this to me? And in that moment, as they call out, they do see they see the lights flashing around and head towards it, even as they search around for by they hold up their I feel like the light that they're using to guide themselves is like cigarette lighter. It's like little a tiny little flame mm. they, they like they like hold their lighter around as they're searching for for their scrap of velvet as their as their anxiety continues to build and grow as they just like like what do you want from me why are you doing this to me like answer me the trees of course do not answer what does this reveal to me about what does this reveal about me to the others? Uh great question. <laughs> A naivety, maybe? Perhaps, yeah. Like calling out expecting an answer. Yeah. I was gonna say maybe a sense of self persecution. Oh, yeah. that too. That you're yeah. beset upon by something within yourself. Yeah. Despite the fact that you've run into it at least one other person and possibly two and just like but why is stuff happening to me 
right yes. yeah like not in a conscious sort of way but yeah Misha's never really been the type to be scared of the dark. Some kids are, um, and some kids just, it never seems to bother them. I'm, they're the sort of person that likes to have like blackout curtains and sleep masks and stuff. Like, no light actually is quite nice. But there's something different about this place. I think they're using, um, I think it's one of those, they're not wearing it as a, a headlamp, but like those ones, those ones on the straps that you could just wear. But I think it's like just idly like wrapped around their wrist. But it's um, it's a, a red LED in there because they read sometime that it's better for bats and stuff. Um, so it doesn't, and also so it doesn't fuck up your night vision. But they're moving around, letting this tugging feeling move them on. And it's like before the tugging felt like excited almost. Just like, come on, come with me, follow, come on. And now it's becoming more insistent. And they aren't sure how to feel about it now. Like before they were curious and a little bit annoyed. But now that sort of anger is bubbling up and it's not a feeling they like to indulge in. And so they reach um, into the pocket of their leggings to find their little, little vial and can't find it. I got spades again. And Misha's like, no, no, I fuck, no. And drops down where they are and starts, like, looking for it. Trying to see if the light from their little lamp will catch off the glass of the vial. And they think they see it. And so they reach forward and they it's not it's not there. But so they start digging with their bare hands at the soft ground, like pushing like rotting leaves out of the way. And they don't realise that their hands are getting cut up as they do so. As the sharper elements of this foliage bite into their skin and like one of their fingernails gets almost ripped off and they don't care, they don't even notice because they're desperately trying to find It's August, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed us, please consider leaving a rating on your podcast platform of choice, telling your friends about us, or tweeting about us using the FTLcast hashtag. 
We are also part of a nonprofit podcasting guild called Standing Stones Productions. We do a variety of shows, including The Room Where It Happened and Dumb Kids Playing Hero, two actual play shows, and a Steven Universe discussion podcast called Gay Space Rocks. We also do live streams at twitch.tv slash standingstonesprod. You can keep up with everything that we do on Twitter at stones underscore standing. Unfortunately, Standing Stones was already taken. Your support means a lot. Thanks again!